we've got a pretty big day in the crypto markets. A lot of interesting things have gone on. Specifically, the SEC has launched an investigation into a number of recent ICOs, which uh, is, in my opinion, pretty scary news. We're going to dive into that. I've heard some rumors about it. Also want to touch a little bit on the ZCL fork. Uh, I thought the way that played out was pretty interesting. So I uh, really want to touch on that and just my overall thoughts on the marketplace in general right now. Quick, uh, quick word here if you're watching on the YouTube or if you're on the podcast. The Ledger Nano S's are back in stock. If I know a lot of people are waiting to get a new Ledger Nano S, but they were kind of all out and the only place you could get them was a third party on Amazon. If you want to pick one up, I do have an affiliate link. It'll be in the description of the video. It's cryptobobby.com uh, slash ledger. But they're back in stock and free shipping now, uh, shipping today. If you want to secure your crypto with a ledger or also check out a treasure as well. I can't even pronounce that. But let's hop into some news that literally just came out a few minutes ago. So this is a story from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Paul Vigna, who was one of the kind of big authors behind uh, a number. Uh, Paul Vigna is one of the big authors behind a number of crypto books. And specifically, he just wrote this article. It is blocked on Brave for me, but he just wrote this article about uh, with uh, Gene Engelsham regarding the SEC has issued a number of subpoenas and information requests to basically cryptocurrency ICO companies. And I've heard some rumors, uh, you know, I've heard some rumors about this from a couple different people uh, in my friend circle in, uh, you know, New York City. I wasn't exactly sure what was the deal, what was happening, but yeah, the SEC is uh, definitely taking note uh, on what is happening right now in the ICOs and has sent out a number of notices demanding information, wanting to find out about how they've structured sales, who the pre-sales went to, things like that. And uh, overall, I don't think it's great news for a lot of companies, especially anybody in the U.S. perhaps um, that raise money. But yeah, regulators are definitely taking note of what is going on right now in the crypto markets. And there's a lot of companies out there. There's a lot of you know perhaps companies that have recently done ICOs or kind of in the ICO process. Maybe you contributed to the to the ICO. You haven't gotten your tokens yet. Uh, there's a reason a lot in a lot of cases, these companies haven't listed on exchanges yet. Uh, and a lot of it is due to perhaps what's going on with the SEC right now. So uh, just keep that in mind. I don't know what's going to happen. I have you know, no clue, no indication there. But I mean, in my mind, when I'm looking at this, a lot of uh, what could potentially happen is you know, innovation is going to move ICOs offshore, which it basically is already doing. Uh, innovation is going to move ICOs outside of the United States, which is already happening. Most companies are either moving headquarters outside of the US. They are not allowing US investors, sometimes even accredited US investors to participate at all in these ICOs. So, you know, companies are just saying, hey, we're not even going to, we're not even going to bother with it. But then there's a lot of companies that have performed ICOs in the past when regulation wasn't clear. And that's, you know, it's really an unfortunate thing that's happening right now. And it's leading to a lot of uncertainty in the markets, at least in my mind. And the best way, at least if you don't want to exit out of crypto, but you are, you know, Bitcoin is, I think, relatively going to be unaffected by it. A couple other crypto, you know, pure cryptocurrencies out there, straight up mineable cryptocurrencies. But depending upon how this SEC regulation and this, this probe goes into ICOs, uh, it could have, I would say, neutral to negative effects. I really don't see much of a way that, that this is a positive unless they come out with some really nice, clear guidelines, but I just don't know if that's in the SEC's uh, wheelhouse to do so. So I'm sitting back and I'm definitely keeping an eye on this. Again, I've heard I've heard some rumors, some rumblings uh, from the kind of crypto circle in New York about what's going on here. So anything that might be any slowdowns in token releases, anything like that, any any negative kind of stories. A lot of times people just get antsy and they freak out. And sometimes you have to realize like a lot of these companies where this is going down, you know, they're trying not to get sued and get thrown in jail. So you have to have to take everything with a grain of, you know, a grain of salt there. But I'll put a link to this Wall Street Journal. It's a paid uh paid one. So I don't have a Wall Street Journal subscription. I could view it on Twitter, but for whatever reason I couldn't view it on the desktop. 
So I'll, I'll include a link there. But yeah, that's from Paul Vigna in regards to the cryptocurrency probe. And again, I see that as potentially neutral news, neutral to negative. I don't really view this as positive by any stretch. So I'm keeping an eye on it, though. Uh, absolutely. Could be could have a lot of implications when it comes down to the vast number of ERC-20 tokens, especially that happened in the U.S. Um, that could certainly be affected by this. So definitely something to keep in mind there. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, the ZCL fork. I'll pull this up. I'll throw this up on the full screen here. But uh, a lot of people are talking about this, and I've talked about it a couple of different times previously, and people are like, you know, when I talked about making my bad trade on ZCL and not pulling the trigger early enough, People are like, yo, are you salty? I'm not salty at all. Um, and I actually, prior to the prior to the fork after this uh, after this recent recent run up last night, I was actually able to exit. So I exited the trade uh, last night after Bittrex announced support for crediting Bitcoin private to ZCL holders. So I was able to exit my trade actually at about a 10% gain. So after all that, <laughs> I gained 10%. But um, it was really interesting to see the crazy fast sell-off, obviously, because the incentive to hold ZCL uh, is massively diminished since the vast majority of people that were holding Z Classic were really using that as a method to speculate on the future out uh, of the future value of Bitcoin Private. And once you receive the Bitcoin Private, once the snapshot happens, you essentially are, are, are gaining Bitcoin Private in two days or so. And the incentive to continue to hold Z Classic is way, way lower. Now, I'm actually surprised that after it it dipped very, very hard, uh, went down about, we'll see how far it went down here. Uh, from the time of the, uh, you know, from the time of the snapshot, at one point in time, it dropped about 85%. It's actually recovered a little bit and still has trading like well above where it was previously. It's down about 65%, but I'm surprised it's not down a lot more. I was thinking it would probably be you know below 85 percent of its value so it's been interesting to to hear it and I'll hold up and watch it hold up but um, like I said I exited the trade I was not that I'm super super negative on Bitcoin private but I was kind of expecting it to have more exchange support and maybe that'll maybe that'll happen maybe that'll come but it seemed like there was a lot of interest from from people in the uh, crypto world in the community and uh, so that is so that's a positive. Uh, I mean, I thought that was going to be a, a positive thing. And I thought, you know, binary, or excuse me, I thought Bittrex would almost certainly be supporting the fork and, and uh, crediting people. And then also perhaps having a ZCL trading, uh, you know, having a BTC to ZCL trading pair. And when they came out and they said that they wouldn't have that, I saw the opportunity. I said, hey, I can get out of this with 10, 15%. Uh, and I'd go ahead and do that. So that's kind of my thought process there. And again, I'm not positive or negative necessarily on ZCL. I was just expecting a lot more support from the overall like crypto community. Hey, maybe that can change if Binance comes out and, and drops uh, BTCP on their exchange and that shoots the price up <laughs> to the moon. But until that happens, or I, I just wasn't getting a really solid feeling that that would happen. And I decided to, to exit that trade. A couple different things though, that some people have mentioned is, Hey, is the same thing going to happen to Ethereum classic? And again, I, I also exited my Ethereum classic trade for, for a small gain. Uh, I was hoping for something bigger, but it didn't really play out that way. But with Ethereum classic, I do not believe, you know, there might be a small sell off, but you're not going to see a 70, 75, 80% downturn with Ethereum classic, because while people may or may not be using the Ethereum, you know, by may, may or may not be buying into Ethereum classic to, gain access to Callisto. So I'll pull up the Ethereum uh, ETC charts here. While they may or may not be using ETC to gain access to Callisto, what, what is happening or, you know, kind of the difference there is Ethereum Classic is still going to be Ethereum Classic after, uh, you know, after everything ends up, uh, after the, the, the airdrop with Callisto happens. However, with Z Classic, like all the developer community is mostly migrating to Bitcoin private. Um, some people have said some positive things about the overall, like, you know, miners staying on. But if there's no innovation happening, that doesn't give me a massive incentive to continue to hold Z Classic. Whereas Ethereum Classic, ETC, and all these classics are getting a little bit confusing, but ETC, people might be buying into ETC in anticipation of that Callisto airdrop. However, um, 
it's not really going to change the outlook of ETC in the long run. So I don't necessarily think you know there might be a sell off, but it's not going to be anywhere near uh, as strong. It's 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 not going to be a sixty percent sell off. I I would doubt it even be like a twenty five or thirty percent sell off. But I think there might be a sell off prior to you know prior to that airdrop a snapshot. But uh, I don't think it's it's comparable in really any way to ZCL because the fork was different than the airdrop, as well as the the value of e, uh, the kind of intrinsic value of Z Classic following the snapshot is much much lower than the intrinsic value of ETC following the airdrop. So that's kind of my overall thoughts on that process at this point in time. Overall, though, I've been you know I've been keeping a strong eye on the markets for the most part. Crypto has been down. Uh, Bitcoin has been down a little bit. It has been hovering nicely in this kind of like in between 10, 10,200, 10,800 range. It's had a lot of struggles breaking 10,800. I do believe that if it does, it's going to continue to get some positive momentum and kind of suck more money out of the altcoins. So we'll have to see what ends up rolling with that. But uh, I haven't made any significant movements in my portfolio for the time being outside of exiting the ETC and ZCL trades and keeping that money in Bitcoin. I do think we might continue to see a rise in Bitcoin dominance, and that's giving me a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of an indication to maintain a heavy weighted portfolio in Bitcoin. So that's kind of my thought process at this point in time is until I start to see a a slowdown in the 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 alt death. Everybody wants it to be alt season. Everybody wants it to be alt summer. But until I start seeing a little bit of a pull, uh, you know pick up in that activity, uh, being heavily weighted in Bitcoin for the time being is is appealing to me and something that I think I'm going to continue to continue to do at this point in time. So uh, definitely something that's on my mind moving forward here. Now, outside of that, what I would definitely recommend is just keeping an eye on what's going on with the SEC stuff. If if it comes out, I, I don't know. There are no specific ICOs that have been named. There are no specific projects or companies. But I would very much expect that to negatively impact the valuation of said companies if we find out that the subpoenas have gone to specific organizations. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the worst thing in the world, but I would maybe keep some some tight uh you know tight stop uh stop limit orders on the on some of these altcoins that you have whether it's on Binance or if it's somewhere else i know you're not supposed to necessarily leave crypto on an exchange but this this gives me a little bit of nerves uh for sure you know it's traditionally in my mind it's been where there's smoke there's been fire in a lot of these regulatory issues and you, i've been hearing about this for the past week or so and now i've seeing the seeing this in the Wall Street Journal. And I wouldn't doubt if we hear specific companies in the near future as well. So if you have a company that's ICO'd recently and has, um, yeah, I would just do your own due diligence and make sure that you have a good understanding of what's going on. For anybody that's watching on the YouTube as well, uh, sorry for not showing my ugly face. I was traveling this weekend and haven't gotten a chance to reset up my camera and I've just been lazy as heck. If you're on the podcast, you probably don't care. So we're all good to go there. Uh, but if you, are, if you are on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, the notify bell. If you have been around here for a while and hit that like button if you have been a subscriber. And if you are on the podcast, I would love, love, love a rating and a review. That would really mean the world to me. So thank you so much, guys. Look forward to uh, keeping an eye on everything for you. And I uh, hope you have a good one. Crypto Bobby signing out. Peace.